Do you think Hitler could have been stopped? One of the things that's kind of fascinating to look at is how many nations, both journalists and nations, wanted, almost craved to take Hitler at his word that he wanted peace until it was too late. Mm -hmm. They almost wanted to be delude themselves. I mean, the same is true with the Stalin. Uh, people wanted to take Stalin at his word for. Oh, they still delude themselves. Yeah, I mean, we will delude. We we will delude ourselves over any number of things, and until even after the fact, where the history just says, "Hey, fuck face," <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, you you cannot supplement your pseudo reality onto actual reality here yeah. uh, any, uh, But yet, we deal with people in pseudo realities constantly. It, I mean, it. it we wow. will always find a way to to change reality to suit our needs. Well, the nature of truth now, there's now multiple actual truth. It's kind of fascinating. There's multiple st versions of history that people are telling, you know, the the, the version yes. <laughs> the version of the, gr the, the Great Patriotic War in mm -hmm. Russia, the World War II in Russia is very different today under Putin mm -hmm. than the version that we're learning on uh, in the United States and then different than the version in Europe. In the United States, uh, the the hero of the war is the United States. In Europe, there's a much more sad and solemn story mm -hmm. of suffering and so on. Sure. In in Russia, it's the great uh, patriotic war. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it was the, it was a unifier uh, yeah. of a sense, and it. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you can't argue that war and conflict that and or I just even um, reducing that to stressors, agitation, suffering doesn't m create human motivation. You know, we started this off, you brought up uh, Frankel, and I'm like, yeah, Frankel's dope. Man's search for meaning, uh, Maslow's great. And and I talked to you about how I started to think like, man, do, do the ability for human beings to, to, to live and or potentially flourish in the worst environments you can think of is pretty incredible in and of itself. And that it's a crazy thought to think that without Frankel and Maslow ending up in concentration camps, do they write some of the most important books on philosophy in the 20th century? And that's insane on a lot of different levels. But- um, Yeah, suffering is a creative force. I mean, I don't, do you think we'll always have war? Do you, do yes, you we will always have war in, in some form or another. We, we need, quote unquote, air quotes for those just listening, uh, <laughs> war to survive. We need war to flourish. We need at least- Can you explain the quote, uh, the air quotes around well, the war? Well, because uh, take, <laughs> take, take, take the- Do you see wars as violence? No, wars okay. are not violence. So like, so when no, we're talking- No, air quotes about because uh, while, you know what, us getting on the mat or just getting on these hardwood floors and wrestling yeah. around yeah. is not literal war. It's yeah. war of a sorts. You know, we're, you know, it is, it is a diluted form of war. American football is a diluted form of war. All this, these are diluted forms of war. Tennis is a diluted form of war. Um, and I think the, one of the best explanations I ever got from this and another person very, uh, impactful on, on my life and outlook and w thinking about things, Cormac McCarthy. And so in Blood Meridian, there's this fantastic speech about war given by the judge which there's a ton of fantastic speeches on things given by the judge yeah all that exists in creation without my knowledge does so without my consent I'm like, okay that's pretty heavy that's that's hard go oh, ahead can you break that up can you say that again uh all things that exist in creation all things that exist without my knowledge do so without my consent w what does that mean to you? well i think from the judge's perspective it's like well i didn't consent to to that bird or that dog or this building or all this like all of this you know i didn't create it so it's done so without my consent and if it's up to my consent well i'll design it how i want to there's a, another similar uh look into how the judges in that book is he would study everything everywhere he went and so he's collected this group of ne'er-do-wells from all over to go on these hunts uh, against uh, certain uh, tribes in, in the Southwest um, and getting paid by the US government, the Mexican government. So he's on these Indian hunts and yet they're going to all these different places and 
they would stay the night in a cave somewhere and he would find cave paintings and he would write them all down or he would find old pieces. There's a, an example of him, uh, the narrator uh, explaining how watching the judge and how he drawing everything. He's got this notebook just full of things, drawings and, and writings and how he found like a piece of armor from a conquistador or something way back in the day, a Spanish armor. And he draws it into his, his book and then crushes it. You and know. so that so the reason we will always have war in the society is because there's these struggle of amongst people that want to be the designers. There's there's that, but it's I'm just saying that uh, he's got this whole quote on war, like war is about is is play. War, war is a game, and the difference is is that what's at stake. So all things are a game of some sort and some you're putting up for it or you're, what you're willing to put up for it determines whether or not you're going to participate or not. And, you know, all, all aspects of any game is war and it's just, what, what is at stake? You know, if it's your life, it's a different story. If it's just a coin, it's another thing. A nice way to put it is uh, if humans play a game in this kind of pursuit of uh, creating what, what, whatever the hell the reason is that we keep creating cooler and cooler things, mm -hmm. that that it seems to be the result of a game that we naturally play, mm -hmm. we naturally mm -hmm. crave. I don't know. I mean, that's been the struggle of philosophy is to understand what is the underlying force of all that. Is it the will to power? Is it? I think will to power is a really great way of uh, of describing it. Do you want to be the winner of the game? No, not just. No, I don't look at will to power as being the winner of the game. Uh, well, I mean. If we're going to get philosophical, yes, you want to be the winner of the game. What does winning the game act, define how you win? Everybody's going to define that win differently. You know, you could define the win in the most base level, like, oh, I got all the things. <laughs> well, if you got all those things without the, the needing component of fulfillment, then you're going to be a very unhappy person with a whole lot of things. But there's a self-referential aspect to where, to me, the winner of the game is defined by the people playing the game. So if I'm playing a game... I want to win in the sense that most of the other people who are playing the game will say, yeah, that guy won by their, by our collective definition of win. If I just come up, listen, I'm sort of, if I come well, up with a my lot own, of, that's a lot of weight on the external on you. Right. But that's, that's how games seem to work. Somewhat. So I'm already a winner in my life by defining my own definition of success. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm basically the best person in the world at doing uh, uh, me. At, at being Lex. Yeah. 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 So like, and that, I'm really happy with that. That's, yeah. that's a source of uh Well, I mean, think about it. Well, games are also uh, iterated, right? So you, you start off with your game yeah. and then your game with your immediates and then the game further than that and the game further than that and then the game today and the game tomorrow and the game next week and so it never ends and if you try to keep thinking about it that way no wonder people go crazy but <laughs> we we don't want to think about things that way we don't want to think about uh, being towards death we don't want to think about uh, whether or not i'm going anywhere after this other than in the ground or what have you like we, we you know so well, all, all of these games are a sense some distraction. This is where we uh, brought kind up. of, but I mean, it's it's violence. Is that um, we need to let this out, and so it, it, it is of our kids need to wrestle and play, just like animals need to wrestle and play. We need to have forms of competition. We need to have ways to to test ourselves uh, to create uh, when uh, what is it uh, when at peace a man of war makes war with himself. And so we need to be able to competently go at war with ourselves and go at war with our neighbor and go at war with our neighbor's neighbor in a way that is repeatable at the very least. So one one way of saying that there will always be war, I mean, that's my ho hopeful view is that most of the war conducted in the future will be, like you said, the man must go to war with himself. That would it's, be great. That that's That's what, to me, love is is like focusing on yourself and your own improvement and your own creativity and towards others mm -hmm. feeling uh, n sort of emphasizing cooperative behavior and compassion and would be great. empathy. It would be great. But I mean, you can have, well, I'll put it to you this way. If you have uh, a whole community of Randians and a whole community of Ancoms, and they could all like, uh, I don't know, 
uh, toast of London on Netflix and they love Netflix and they love the internet and they love, uh, picking apart Mon Comp with you. They love like, they like they all these things, even the esoteric that they can, they yeah. can, they can get on with, but yeah. at the, at the fundamental root, they cannot help but go to war because they are literally oil and water. No, the, but see, but they would, the, the very labels they assign to themselves would need to dissipate. Well, this true. Is the, well, then you would have to stop being whatever it is that you took on as your ideological or religious point, right? Yeah, I mean, I there's some days I'm a ANCOM, some days I'm an NCAP, some, uh, <laughs> whatever the uh, anarchic, uh, anarchic capital. I mean, yeah. there's, it depends on the, uh, the the hour, the minute of the day, you're constantly changing moods and embracing that flow, the change of opinions, of ideas. As there's some days where like I'm actually yeah. cognizant of the fact because I've been not getting my sleep. And after I get some sleep, I see I'm so much more optimistic about mm. the world. The less and less sleep I get, the more sad uh, and cynical I get. I can see that. There's I, an I, up and down constantly. I, I, I don't even let my well, okay. I try not to let. And most days it's never a problem. Any sort of like uh what are the, what the kids call it now black pilled way of thinking yes. be my 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 over my the umbrella which i hang under 